It's been scientifically proven that our mind can do a lot of damage when it comes to our investing and our philosophy about the future. And when you put on top of that, the 24 seven news cycle, well, that's a problem. And we're going to talk about how to fix that right now. Welcome to the Trending Report, brought to you by USA Financial. The Trending Report is a bi-weekly show that aims to focus on the trend lines rather than the headlines. Each episode features commentary around the state of the market, as well as other factors that may impact your personal finances. The host of the Trending Report is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. The Trending Report is educational and not intended as personal financial advice. Welcome to the Trend Report, where we like to say trend lines beat headlines. And that's a really appropriate tagline for us today, as we're going to assess the 24-7 news cycles and how that has a negative impact on the emotions that you apply toward your money uh, and toward the well-being that you see not only for yourself, but for your children and for next generation. And as always, we're also going to dive into a bunch of the different market data, looking at it from different angles to give you an overview overview of what's going on in the market. Uh, and that data will be as of last Friday, which is April 7th, just prior to the Easter weekend. So with that being said, let's jump in. Now, you might recall back in 1980, CNN launched as the very first 24-7 all news station. And they went from having to fill a 30-minute or maybe a 60-minute slot for the nightly news as it used to take place into needing to fill a 24 hour slot. Uh, and it took a few years for it to take off, but within uh, just a few years by the mid 1980s, people were starting to realize, hey, this was a pretty good business model. And today we have multiple 24 seven news channels. We have social media sites and websites blasting news constantly. And it is an absolute bombardment that attacks our personal life in terms of news media. And the thing to keep in mind is that has been proven to not be good for you. Uh, the American Psychological Association has uh, has scientifically stated that there is a media overload that is hurting our mental health and is creating headline stress, as they call it, which is an interesting term, I think, uh, because you have to keep in mind that the news uh, sources are businesses. And these businesses have realized that negative headlines outpull and outsell positive headlines. They need to get you to click through. They need to keep their advertisers happy. They need to have that content get consumed. And they've come to realize that the negative content is much more readily consumed than is the positive content. Now, that's partially because sometimes, you know, there's not a whole lot to report when things are going well. So what do we want to report on when things are not going well? And then that gets a bit magnified and a bit blown out of proportion. And maybe your, your mind just feels like there's all this negativity out there because there's no positive side to offset any of it. So all of that leads to this Wall Street Journal poll that takes place. And they have uh, identified that most Americans now doubt that their children will be better off than they are. Now, historically speaking, we know that's not true. We know, statistically speaking, historically speaking, uh, economically speaking, uh, and in just about every other category you want to check a box on, that the, the next generation is always better off than the previous generation. Now, you can argue moral issues and so on and so forth, but in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of true economic scenarios, you know, and the services you have at your fingertips, what's inside your house and the ease with which your home operates versus, you know, chopping wood for your heat or getting blocks of ice to keep things cool or whatever it might be. You know, everything just keeps progressing and the services and the comforts we have today far, far, far uh, are better off than we were in the older days. But needless to say, the mind can change uh, or can play some tricks on you and can change your way of thinking about these things, which is the point of the Wall Street Journal article. And I'm going to boil it down to the three main questions they ask, and I'm going to put it against a timeline with the stock market to give a little perspective and hopefully help you have a, a quick, easy tool to keep your mind in check as you look at your investments in the future. 
Now, the first question that they asked is, do you feel confident that life for your children's generation will be better than it has been for you? And here, if we go back to 1990, this is when the flip-flop took place. So right here, the green was above. That means they feel confident that, yes, the children's generation is going to be better. That was above the red line uh, that they did not feel confident that was going to be the case. And that was in 1990. And here we are, 1990, on the S&P 500, way back down here. And at that point in time, it went the other direction. And then, as you can see, it creeped its way back up to being a positive reflection, uh, whereas they felt more confident than they felt less confident uh, in the year 2000 to 2001, which is right here, just before the dot-com bubble. So in other words, this rise made people start to feel better again. But then the dot-com bubble happens, the drop happens, all of a sudden we see these numbers all come back down again, and they stay down. And this is what is known as the lost decade. It truly was a negative period of time in the market. We started the, uh, the decade here. We ended the decade here. Yeah, over a 10-year time frame, you actually, if you were in a passive investment, had no risk management on it, you actually lost money over that 10-year time frame, at least as it relates to the S&P 500 here. Um, but then after... The, the financial crisis, which was right here, 2008, 2009, we never saw that confidence come back, even though we see this kind of run take place in the stock market. And today, we see that confidence level is at a historic low down here. And that's putting us uh, coming off the pandemic, looking at what's happening in Ukraine right now, what's going on with inflation, and so on. Now, in the end, are we going to see the stock market go up? Is it going to be better 10 years from now, 20 years from now than it is today, financially and economically, and through all the different things that we enjoy in life? Likely, yes. But people are saying their confidence level is very low, that that's actually going to be the case. It's because the short-term bias and the 24-7 media bias is kind of eating them up, if you will. Now, <clears throat> the other question they asked, is would you describe the state of the nation's economy these days as being poor or not so good or excellent uh, or good? And now the time frame goes back to the year 2000. So here we are, the year 2000, just before the dot-com bubble, like we mentioned a moment ago. And we were saying, yeah, look at that. So like 75% of people were saying it was excellent or good. But then the dot-com bubble hits and we see this downturn taking place with all of the green nosediving. And then here we are in the financial crisis. It hit kind of rock bottom right in this time frame here. Then we get that run that we talked about. Uh, and we see it start to kind of increase, but it has now dropped back down uh, to this point here today, being not at the absolute low, but basically uh, the second to lowest low, so to speak, in terms of the economy. And again, it has to do with all the different things we were just talking about. And then the final question is, taken all together, how would you say things are these days? Would you say that you are very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy. Now, what I thought was kind of interesting here is they're going all the way back to 1972 on this part of the, the questionnaire. And you'll notice that these lines, I mean, they bounce around, but they're relatively steady. People are pretty happy. They're pretty happy at about the, what would that be? Maybe 55% of the people would say they're pretty happy. And then here's the, the, uh, the green is very happy. It's always been kind of in this middle zone. And then down here is the not too happy. These two crisscrossed. That's the interesting part of this. These two crisscrossed coming into 2020 and beyond. Here's the 2020 dot right there, if you see it. And then here's uh, the current dot down here. And that's with the pandemic in what's taking place right now. So here... It's kind of hard to see with this red decade line, but there's the drop in the pandemic. The market came down and then it jumped back up. And now we've seen this, this rough patch here that's taking place again. Uh, but very interesting that the pretty happy people, it didn't change. It's right in that same range. 
But these two did a flip-flop, which is kind of unusual. And again, a mindset you want to think of, because again, if we're going back to 1972, look at what's happened. The stock market ran pretty flat for a long time, but then when it took off, it really did take off. So with that being said, let's talk about the trends that are actually taking place in the market uh, as we speak. <clears throat> so here we are with the uh, capitalization uh, subsets. So we're going from large caps down to small caps, and then we're taking the total stock market as kind of a, a measuring line in the middle. That's this blue bar that we see here. And then we're ranking it from macro level down to nano level. So from high level down to low level uh, in terms of what's going on. And the nano is entirely green. The shortest period of time we look at, everything is leaning bullish right now. And as you can see, from here, from about here on up, kind of if you can see me kind of outlining this, this is all green. So the overall market itself has a positive overall number on the tilt. That's the added to together number or the aggregate of the macro, meso, micro, and nano. And what we're seeing is the large cap is really carrying the day. Uh, this is the NASDAQ 100 up here. Then we've got the S&P 100 and the S&P 500 growth in the index itself. And then down here at the bottom, we're seeing the mid caps and the small caps. But keep in mind, in the short term, the mid caps and small caps over here are also showing positive. So it'll be interesting to see if this red continues to move in the same direction as the large cap and starts turning green for us. Um, but as you can see, the macro is down here. We were in a long downturn. That's all this red, but then it started turning green and we're seeing this green here. We've got the nano green is this upturn right here that's taking place. So right now, capitalization, large cap, even down to small cap is starting to show some signs of, of turning positive again uh, in the overall stock market. Now, if we look at it from a different angle, and instead of looking at it from large cap to small cap, now we're going to look at it in the 11 different sectors that make up the overall market. Here in the middle, we have an equal weighting of all those sectors, uh, and it's just as you would expect. It's green, just like the overall market was. And here we're seeing up top are the green uh, leaning bullish sectors. Uh, and then from a nano perspective, everything is green, just like we were talking about a moment ago. So here we've got information tech, telecom, consumer staples, and consumer discretionary kind of buoying up, really lifting the overall market. And then down at the bottom, we've got real estate and financials uh, bringing in the last three spaces if we add energy into that equation as well. Uh, <clears throat> but we're seeing a very similar market perspective here as we saw a moment ago. Uh, here's your uh, all of your uh, red that was taking place until we start to see the green here. It's working its way back up. Here's our little nano stretch right here, which is that reflection uh, taking place. Internationally, we're actually seeing that right now international is kind of leading the charge. There's more green here on the board, so to speak. So the overall uh, international market here in the middle uh, coming in again green. We see a few little bit bearish leanings on some of the, the timing uh, subsets, but again, everything at the, the, the most uh, minuscule view, which is in timing is, our, is what we call nano. Everything there is green. Uh, we're seeing quite a bit of green here. Here's the macro green. Here's the overall tilt green. Here's the green taking place in the nano right now. So this upward trend that we're seeing right here uh, is playing out at the international level and seems to kind of be leading the charge back here at the U.S. Now, previous, we were seeing the opposite. The U.S. was kind of winning the day, so to speak. But right now, international seems to be pulling things back up. And then final viewpoint we want to take a look at today is the bond market. Now, the bond market, again, is, is kind of unique in the fact that just about everything on here is green. All of the bonds are performing as of right now. Uh, but probably most interesting is we're seeing the government bonds here, uh, the long-term governments, the 20-year and the 10-year, and then we're seeing the uh, the intermediate corporates that are kind of leading the way. Down here at the bottom, we've got the short one to three-year treasury, and we've got high yield that are kind of in the last two spots. Uh, but right in the middle of the pack, we've got corporates, and then we see some of the other uh, 
uh, time frames from the U.S. Treasuries as well. So overall, the bond market had been in a downward trend. This is our macro. If we bring this right down here, you're seeing all of this red is essentially what what's happening as the market is dropping or the uh, the performance is dropping there. And then we see it start to turn the corner here. Uh, this is when we see this green spot take place here. And also the shorter term nano is this green uptick right in here again. So right now things are starting to kind of overall tilt back to the bullish uh, leanings. That doesn't mean that it's going to stay there. Obviously, these are trends. These are not predictions, uh, but it does give you a track, so to speak, to get your arms around what's really going on in the market. Thanks again for listening to this episode of The Trending Report, powered by USA Financial. We invite you to visit usafinancial.com to find out more about our work with independent advisors and their clients all around the country. Any projections, targets, or estimates in this report are forward-looking statements and are based on the firm's research, analysis, and assumptions. Due to the rapidly changing market conditions and the complexity of investment decisions, supplemental information and other sources may be required to make informed investment decisions. All expressions of opinions are subject to change without notice. Clients should seek financial advice regarding the appropriateness of investing in any security or investment strategy discussed.